I watched last week and I knew they ran extremely hard both ways and their work ethic to uh, create a contest or outnumber and if they don't win it they physically put you under pressure and our players knew exactly where you know, the Adelaide Crows um, sat on the ladder and, and what their output was so we didn't get surprised by what they delivered today. Our challenge was to equal it or better it and uh, really we didn't come up to the mark by a long way. Yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, Adelaide didn't go out to uh, do anything different. They just, you know, probably put their head over the ball and won clearances and, and the contested ball. I just thought they did it so much better than us to win 50-50s, 2v1s, half contests. They smashed us in that area of the game. And I think, you know, uh, contested ball was plus by about 27 or something like that. And uncontested ball, when they... You know, we didn't get the same pressure back on them as they did to us. And I think it was plus... 40 or 47 or 43 in uncontested. So they beat us inside the, the bubble and then they smashed us outside the bubble as well. Did we? That would be question. I thought they outnumbered us at one end and outnumbered us at the other end. So their ability to do that was, I think that's a work ethic and uh, our players have, you know, we've spoken about that, um, that we need to start working a lot harder, not just as individuals, but collectively. I think it was more about, oh, it's not going my way. Do you go into your shell and start playing, you know, I've got my bloke, I'm OK, when, you know, the best teams are the ones that just work together and, and do it together. And at the moment, we're just more about the individual, not about the team. What's happened since the Collingwood game announced that it was one of the real features that night? I mean, you spoke about it after that game yeah. for three weeks. What's happened in the last five weeks? Been... Yeah, we played Essendon, who uh, are going pretty well. Uh, they've lost a game by point, so they're up and about. Uh, Fremantle, we played, um, and strategically, we probably used the ball a lot. You know, uh, we were a lot more patient that night, which was a credit to the group. They played extremely well, and then you know we've beaten GWS, but I think it's yeah we've just fell away in that area. So yeah, we don't seem like we're running you know on top of the ground, or that flair that we've had isn't there, and uh, we're getting beaten inside the contest too many times, and. As you know, our stoppage numbers have just decreased in the last month significantly, even in the GWS games and some of the games that we've won the game. They haven't been up to the level that we would like them to be. How do you think the sides have worked you out as to how to attack you around the stoppages? I think, uh, you know, Essendon uh, put a lot of numbers around the stoppages after, you know, in the Collingwood game we had a little bit of space there and uh, our players were... You know, on top of their on top of their game and use that space really well. I think you know teams are putting more numbers around there, so the congestion side of things is just a lot heavier. And um, yeah, I think we're going to confront it week in, week out. So as we spoke to the players after the game, expect high numbers around stoppages because they're going to be there, and that's going to make sure that we get things right at the contest. We didn't pull our half forwards up. You pulled one of your half forwards up a lot, uh, number of times today. Yep. To, to be around that stoppage, to give you the extra number. Still yeah, well, oh, it was sort of fairly spasmodic because sometimes they would send their five, six, you know, their, whether it's a, um, a, a half forward up or not. Um, yeah, they were sort of, it was nearly mirroring. By the end, the numerical numbers were pretty even and we sometimes got the advantage there by one, but, yeah, we didn't get the uh, result that we're after. Do you think for when you see a guy like Sam Jacobs who was at the club have such a game like today? Yeah, he played pretty well. He, you know, I was really surprised he only had six possessions because he, he looked more influential than, than that on the day. So, um, yeah, we, we probably didn't get the same result from our big men as they did uh, on the day. But, um, yeah, just their blokes around the ball, especially early with uh, Thompson and Dangerfield, really doing a lot of work. I think our two against them was Gibbs and Kerno, and I think it was 11 possessions to 31 at half-time. So they were 20 in front at half-time with those two matchups. He's got a, uh, a 
I think it might be an AC, uh, sprain shoulder there, so we're not sure in regards to uh, how significant he'll go and get scans and we'll find out the full result tomorrow, but he probably won't play next week. Brent, Brendan Sanderson said that that collision between Murphy and Dangerfield is an indication of how dangerous the slide ball is with both players sort of coming together, heads over the ball. He reckons that a serious injury is on the cards. Would you agree with that? I think the way the players, uh, you know, run into each other these days, there's a lot of force and, uh, you know, momentum there. So I think, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen, but there's going to be a serious injury in the way the players run in and collide because of the ferocity that they're running. The slide one, it's a tough one. I think, uh, you know, as we've seen, players have had legs broken and things like that. It's probably the greyest part of the game at the moment to try and umpire it and then try and police it after to say that's a week or two weeks for doing that slide motion. I think it's the hardest part of the game to get right and I think it's something that the AFL have to tinker with how they, you know, how we actually start to coach the players and their interpretation, you know, can't be grey either. It has to be really precise so we can actually coach the players to fit the rule so the outcome is not a serious injury. What have you seen of the Yeah, I think they're right up there. I think their work rate and their systems uh, that for each other are very good. And uh, yeah, they've, I really rate how they're playing. You know, especially at the moment, it's early days. But what they've done so far, um, watching some of the other games that they've played, they're right up there in that top four or five bracket. Oh no! I think we've just got to we've got to take it on the chin because you know that's what you know we're dishing up. If you know if we get you know sad and and sulk a little bit and and want things to change around without doing anything, it's just not going to happen. It's um you know we've got the onus now to you know change things internally and you know if we don't do that, then you know teams as you said they're just going to keep being aggressive and, and dominating us. We've got to you know, make sure we take it up to the the competition now. What's that midfield pressure that Adelaide put onto you guys like Midfield pressure. Yeah, look, they were, as Rat said, they were beating us on the inside, but then, you know, spreading better than us as well. So they, I think their, you know, uncontested marks were right up and ours were right down. So it only comes down to work rate and, you know, something that if we don't fix, you know, soon, you know, results aren't going to change too, too much. Well, what Brett said before, he didn't feel the guys sort of running on the top of the ground the last few weeks. Did it feel like that out on the ground that the guys are a little bit flat compared to where you were sort of a month ago? Oh, yeah, but I think that's probably, you know, got more to do with, you know, how the opposition are, you know, sort of owning the contest. We're, you know, a bit flat because we're probably second to the ball and, and second chasing as well. So, you know, as I said, we've got to, you know, just... We don't want to come out and apologise and, you know, say we're embarrassing because I think that's that's an easy out. That's, you know, getting in first. I think we've got to, you know, take everything that comes at us this week and, and internally change things pretty quickly. Perhaps just on the... Any indication whether you have two or it could be an eight or no, they, uh, they sort of. I just caught the. Uh, we brought the players straight in and had a chat, so I only just copped the uh, the back end of it. So yeah, he'll definitely miss next week, whether it's two, four. I don't know what the outcome is just yet, but um, yeah, he'll miss some footy. I don't know how significant. He's just been a little bit sore, so we just looked after him. Same with Digan at the end of the game as well. So we fell away at the end. Um, and it was one of those things that we had to make the call. Do we risk putting players back out there that have got some cramps and a few little niggles? Um, and I suppose that's the hard one uh, for the competition to, uh, you know, for the AFL, I suppose, is to start putting blokes out that might or cause injuries. Um, you might have to concede a couple more goals in the defeat, knowing that you're actually looking after players' welfare, because we did see Digan do a similar incident in uh, Maroochydore when we played in that competition where we'd already used our subs in there and we couldn't bring any other player and we knew he was fatigued and he ended up doing a quad late in the game which uh, we thought could have been managed if we just left him off the ground and but we had no interchange so it's something that we took today and thought if we had to we'd put him on but we didn't do that. Fred, you mentioned players playing for themselves, is that partly why um, Mark Murphy couldn't uh, escape the tag in that first quarter and a half? I think, you know, the, the battles that, um, you know, Thompson got tagged as well. Um, I think it's about working, you know, as small groups. And, you know, you see that in a lot of other sports and cricket, our batsmen work together. I think midfielders work together a bit about getting a block and a screen and just getting out by a metre or two. And it's also up to the individual too. So 
uh, you know, we didn't look like we were running over the top of the ground today or working as well together, but it's about sometimes if you're winning the ball, it makes it easier to run, and today we chased a fair bit for the day, so that's why we're probably, as Michael said, second for the ball, but, you know, it doesn't help when, you know, you, one of your star midfielders is taken out of the game or doesn't have an influence. I think it's about the, uh, the individual working through as well as the group helping out. Here to be a uh, it'll be a uh, interesting battle. I think uh, yeah, where we sit with uh, our group at the moment, we'll have to re-engineer a few players and, and get them going. I think it's you know it's time a couple stood up that haven't played as well as they uh, could have for the last few weeks, and I think that's for everyone, not just one individual for who's going to come in for Murphy's spot or anyone like that. I think it's across the board. I don't think we can say he has to come in and become the Mark Murphy. I think if everyone lifts a bit across the board, we'll get the result done. But if we're trying to do it as individuals and I've got to lift 30% for Murph, we're not going to get the result done. And that's a, that's a, a big thing that's happened, I think, in the last few weeks. Blokes trying to do it for themselves a little bit when we have the opportunity to work harder together to get the result done. Thank you.